There you go. See, that woman right there is now getting a nice review. She deserves it. Amen. Yeah, you know, she deserves it. She had the opportunity to listen to some truth, to obey some truth, but she didn't want to. And now she's getting the truth put to her in a nice, gentle <laughs> rebuke. I tell you something, without him, I would be lost. Without his word, I would be ignorant and without hope. Oh, I tell you something, when I think of all that Jesus did for me, I am in awe of his majesty. I am in awe of his, of his grace and mercy, of his love for us, how he left heaven and humbled himself as a man was born of a virgin lived a pure and perfect life and then died on the cross for my sin drinking the whole cup of God's wrath so that I would not have to then he was raised on the third day. He was raised on the third day. And it was all finished. And the payment was made. And now we have hope in Christ. And many people think there's another way. Even people that say they believe in Jesus say there's another way. And you know what that way they say is? Just be a good person. But I want to let you know something, that's impossible. Because there's none good, not one. That's right, brother. As a matter of fact, this guy came up to Jesus and he goes, Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now right there, Jesus could have told them how to inherit eternal life. But what did he address instead? He said, Why are you calling me good? Why are you calling me good? There's none good but God. Man is not good. And the fool is the person who thinks he's good. The Bible says the fool is pure in their own sight. We are not good. We are depraved. We are wicked. 
Now we are without hope, born in sin, born under Adam's transgression, born cursed. With no reason to be saved. God has no reason to save us other than that he wants to glorify himself in the execution of his mercy and grace in our lives through his son, Jesus Christ. See, God could have done three things when Adam sinned. He could have just wiped out man. Said, oh, okay, let me start fresh, all right? And glorified himself in his wrath towards man. Or he could have forgiven everybody and glorified himself in his mercy and in his grace. But God is just. And you can't have justice where there's mercy. Because where there's mercy, there's no justice because the person did not pay the penalty for a sin. But here's what God did. God glorified himself in the execution of his mercy and grace through his son Jesus Christ to pay the penalty. And God will glorify himself in the destruction of the wicked on the day of judgment. That's right. And that is how God gets full glory in all things. Because he deserves the glory. Yes. God deserves the glory. He is the creator. And it is the fool, the creation, who thinks they should question the Creator. So let me show you a couple ways of how you manifest your foolishness. All right? God gave us a wonderful thing in the written Word. The Holy Bible, where it says God magnified His Word above His name. Yes! Amen. And in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven, on earth, and below earth. Amen. All right? Every name will, everyone will bow, but God magnified His Word above His name. And in His Word, in His Word is truth. Yes. And in His Word Hallelujah. is an explanation of who He is. In His Word is the creation story from the beginning to the end. We know the whole story. He revealed the whole plan his, of this, old, this great controversy. The whole plan has been given to us. And that is how gracious God is. He didn't have to tell us what was going on. He didn't have to tell us who he was. He didn't have to tell us what we must do to be saved. But he did in his written word. And his word is true. His word is true. Truth. And that's where you find the truth is in God's Word. All truth is found in God's Word. We know that lying is wrong because God says so. We know that sodomy and sexual perversion is wrong because God says so. Now many people will say, no, it's okay for a guy to love someone. Well, yeah, you can love a guy, you just can't bend him over and be a sexual pervert. That's not love. That's unnatural lust. That's that right. God actually groups with animal sex. And it's a shame that he has to tell man not to do it. You know, isn't that crazy how retarded and foolish and stupid and wicked man is? That he not only does it has to say, thou shalt not lie with mankind and with womankind, it's an abomination. But then the next verse he says, and thou shalt not have sex with animals. I mean, come on now. Come on now, why would he have to say that? Because we are depraved and we are, we, are, we are cursed in sin. The Bible says we are dead in our sin. And a dead man can do nothing. It isn't until God extends grace to us and regenerates us and gives us life that we even know to repent and we know um, the truth. And the truth is found in his word. Now his word. What do people think of God's word? They hate it. Why do they hate God's Word? Because it's light, and light dispels darkness. And when the Word of God is preached, it reveals the wickedness, it reveals the lie, it reveals the sin. And people hate that, hate the light, because they love their sin. And that's why we're here tonight. We're here to share the truth, because Jesus said that His sheep will know His voice. And His voice is the Word of God. And as the Word of God is preached, if it doesn't prick your heart, if it doesn't cause you to 
to stand there in awe of the majesty of, of God's word, of his truth, then you're probably dead in your sins. People, God's word is true. I exhort you to read the Bible. I exhort you to believe the Bible. I exhort you to obey the Bible. Yes. This is a very simple message. The Word is so important that God calls Jesus the Word, the living Word. Think about this, people. Think about what you're going to do when you die. You know, when you die, that is not the end. That's the beginning of eternity. And what you do when you die is determined with what you do while you're alive. While you have breath, while your heart beats, you have hope. You have hope, and the hope is found in Jesus Christ. But some of the ways that people try to try to go to heaven is to try to be good by doing good works. But there's a verse in the Bible where Jesus said, many will come to me in the final day and say, Lord, Lord, what about us? We did all these wonderful works in your name. We prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. What about us? And he said unto them, Depart from me, I never knew you, ye that work iniquity. Now why would he say that? They profess them to be lords. All those people that say, oh, just profess them to be lord, you'll be saved. Well, they did that. That didn't save them. He said, well, go ahead and do good works. Well, they did wonderful works in his name. They even cast out demons, and they prophesied in his name. And they still said, depart from me. I never knew you, ye that work iniquity. And that's why when Jesus said, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith, you need to examine yourself to see if you're in unrepentant sin. Because a Christian cannot live in sin and be okay with it. That's right. All right? If when they're in sin, their God has given us a conscience, a Holy Spirit, and what that does is it causes us to feel guilt and shame and remorse and we feel terrible and we repent of it and we cry out to God and He is just and able to forgive us. His ability equals His willingness. Or should I say His willingness equals His ability. Okay, sometimes someone's ability does not equal their willingness. And sometimes people are willing but unable. But God is able and willing to forgive us. Amen. Able and willing. Now people, you got to think about this for a moment. You got to think about this. Are you willing? Are you willing to invest some time and read the Bible? Are you able to put down your sin for just a short period of time and crack that Bible and see if it's true? How about if you don't like to read, why don't you listen to the Bible? Just listen to it. Yeah? Listen to it. They've got it on TV, on the internet, you just go on audio Bible. Yep. Go to the Gospel. Go to the Gospel. Listen to Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. And you'll know all about Jesus. It tells you all about Jesus Christ. And then see if it's true. Invest some time in your soul. Alright? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Truth dispels darkness. The Word of God will dispel that darkness. Your sin will... You'll start to feel guilt and shame for your sin. You'll start to feel a love and a, a draw to God if you are in fact a child of God. If you have your father the devil, then you will just hate it. It will be, be, be nothing to you. There will be no feeling. You'll be dead. It will be numb. This message will be numb to you. It will be, it'll be ridiculous because the Bible says that the preaching of the word is foolishness to them that perish. All right? So, if you think what we're saying when we're preaching God's Word to you, that it's foolishness, then that's a great indicator that you're going to perish. And that should, that should put the fear of God in you. And that's another thing I want to address. The fear of God. You know, we have, we have lost, we have lost the fear of God in this nation because of the apostate American Christian Church. Ooh, All right. Good word. That apostate American Christian church has taught people a lie. That God loves everyone just the way they are. But that's not true. God does not love everyone just the way they are. This American apostate church has caused the people of our nation to not fear God. They think, well, why should I fear? I can join God's team whenever I want. 
All I gotta do is say the sinner's prayer, and then I'm on God's team. And then I get a sin credit card, and I can go and sin all I want, because once saved, always saved. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's true. Once God saved you, you are saved. All right? You are saved. But so many people think they're saved, and they're not. And like, see, even at the... See, now you see these little sodomites here? They're wicked. All right, and they know they're wicked and they're acting wicked, but see that security guy back there? She's taking pleasure in it. You see, and the Bible talks about that. It talks about people like you keep taking pleasure in someone else's wickedness. And you're just as guilty as them. And it's a shame. It's a shame, you know. I, I don't even know why you're laughing and trying to get people to, to revel in it with you because no one cares, you know. No one cares. But we care. We care enough about you people to come out here and share our lives with you and tell you the truth. You know? And we're here to glorify God. So whether you believe or whether you reject it, the thing God gets the glory. What's that? Speak English, you're in America right now. No, no, vivo en Dios. What are you talking about? Need a translator, Brother David. <laughs> People, your soul, this is serious business here. This is not like joking around playtime. This is your soul. This is your soul at stake right now. Are you Catholic? Are you Catholic? Because you've never read it. Are you Catholic? Oh, uh, poor guy. He's Catholic. He's a pagan. What's that? We're preaching the gospel, bud. Just hang out and listen. We're talking about Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the Son of Man, the Lamb of God, the Great I Am. He is the Alpha and Omega, our God and our Savior. And so many people want to want to just think this is a game. You know, they want to ridicule when in reality they should be falling on their face and crying out to God because all this is just vanity. You know, read, read Ecclesiastes in the Bible. It's all vanity. Everything, your career, your life, it's all vanity. It's all vanity. The whole, the Solomon said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. That is the whole duty of man. You want to love God, you need to obey Him. You want to obey Him, you need to read the Bible and find out how to obey Him. You want to get saved, read the Bible, find out what He requires of you. Think about that. As a matter of fact, though, there's not much you can do to be saved. It's a gift from God. God saves those who He chooses. Ooh. Oh, yeah. God saves those who He chosen before the foundation of the world. Yep, read Ephesians chapter 1 for that one. There you go. See, <laughs> that woman right there is now getting a nice rebuke. She deserves it. Amen. Yeah, you know, she deserves it. She had the opportunity to listen to some truth, to obey some truth, but she didn't want to. And now she's getting the truth put to her in a nice, gentle <laughs> rebuke. You know, many people think they're saved, they're Christians, do they go to church? Or, you know, because uh, they may crack the Bible open once or twice a week, or, you know, they uh, they give to missionaries or something like that. But I want to let you know something. So, being saved is a radical, all-or-nothing deal. You know, a, a, per, a Christian that is saved gives everything to God. Every thought, every word, every deed. Because he knows that he will be judged on everything he's done, whether it be bad or good. And he is responsible for the time that God has given him. So we, he wants to be a good steward and not a slothful or lazy steward. And many people think they're saved, but they're not. As a matter of fact, I'd say 85% of the people that think they're Christian are not, they're probably on the wide road. Did you know that the straight and narrow way is really straight and really narrow? I mean, it's really narrow and really straight, and you know what? You can't walk it 
on your own. That's right. You need Christ. Amen. Christ is the only way that's going to get you through that straight and narrow way. Yeah, There's no other way to go through that straight and narrow way. Period. Think about that for a minute. You know? But this wide road, man, this wide road is like living on a circle. Any way you go, that's the wide road, man. You can go any way you want. Whatever direction, that's the widest road it can possibly be. You can do anything you want, but you can't walk the straight and narrow way. You can think that you're saved your whole life and then enter into eternity and hear these words, depart from me, I never knew you. Think about that. Think about the torment of that one. Think about worshiping a false god all your life. And that's what apostate American Christianity has done, is they have made a false god out of their Jesus. There are many Christs. There are false Christs, and there's the true Christ. But one thing that I'm, I find really, really disturbing is that you know you have people you have people that try to be good and then you have people that are bad but then you have people like that across you that are actually try to be bad they try to be wicked they try to be more vile than the next and I mean if judgment starts at the house of the Lord what do you think is gonna happen to you I right. mean, think about that I mean you are in for such a big big surprise such a big giant surprise I mean uh, I tell you I, and, and I don't envy I would not wish that upon you right. you know I would hope my hope and prayer for you is that the word of God would go in your ears plant itself in your heart and grow to a saving faith yes you know that you parents would teach your children the way of the Lord and they would not depart from it that God in his mercy would open your eyes and ears and give you a soft and fleshy heart that could receive the truth with gladness. Ah, uh, what a crying shame. What a crying, crying shame it is to see the state of mankind today. You know, the, you know there, one, there's one thing to be hostile towards the word, but there's another thing to be apathetic, to go and hear the truth and it doesn't even affect you. You don't even feel anything. It's just words that you don't understand that just go right past you. That is the biggest danger. That's like an evidence of being an apostate. When your conscience no longer works, or you're unable to grasp the truth. Ah, uh, wake up, people. Yes. Judgment is coming. And salvation is now. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day the Lord hath made. Today is the day to repent, to turn from your wickedness and to get right with God. Today is the day to crack that Bible and read it. Today is the day to read that Bible, believe that Bible, obey that Bible, smell that Bible. Get your nose out of the pornography and put it in the Bible.